What's going on guys? Does your Range Rover Sport have problems where it goes from radio to radio satellite like you see right here? Or possibly your touchscreen is working inconsistently? On, off, power, or for some reason your audio go in and out? Stick around, let's figure out what the problem is. What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel and for those of you that are subscribed or been here before, welcome back. In this episode we are going to be talking about, as you just saw, why the Range Rover Sport L320's radio on the last half of the gen uh, has a problem with the touchscreen and for some reason doesn't want to act like it should. Now for those of you that seen my past video uh, of installing the Tesla style touchscreen, you know that we had some problems with our power and it turns out it wasn't that Tesla screen. It was in fact a typical Range Rover problem. Now if you hadn't seen that video and you guys are interested in a touchscreen that looks like that long Tesla style, go visit the link in the description below. Otherwise, let's kind of get into it. All right, so right off the get, we have to understand exactly how this system works. Now, Jaguar Land Rover decided that they weren't going to be like everybody else and run pretty little wires. Instead, they wanted to use optic cables. And for those of you that are wondering what that is, if you guys have ever hooked up like a sound bar or something like that to a receiver or your TV or something like that, usually it has a little clear uh, wired or optical connector that runs like a red light through it. So rather, I don't know the exacts, but rather than running like power through a speaker wire, for example, it would be like a vibration and a different power going through the wire, they're running information through lighting of some sorts. So they wanted to be fancy with it and really all that got you was more of a headache. So if we look kind of into it, they run with this, this system that's called a MOST system. Now the MOST system stands for module something or another communications network of some other sorts. It doesn't really matter what, the, what it means, but it's basically a two prong plug on each individual um, module, like you'll see up here in the corner. And if you look at the, uh, basically the map that you have right here, or the outlet or the diagram, you'll see that it says like audio head unit. The two plug uh, prong comes into each module and so there'll be one coming in and one going out. And basically this, uh, I guess you could call it uh, visual optical signal that's being sent is a complete circuit. It just keeps running all the way through these. And if at any point of these there's a, a disconnect or a break, then it's not gonna receive, basically receive signal and either gonna have problems or you are going to have a system that doesn't work at all. Now, that could be something that's wrong with a module. It could be that there is a problem in the actual wiring that's powering the module that it's just not getting power. So the first thing we didn't basically need to do is we need to target exactly which module we want to work on. Now, I have a couple things going on. Now, as, as you can see, as I pointed out, the radio satellite feature. Now, I never had satellite radio before, at least I didn't think. Um, so obviously something is thinking that it's on and off whether it has signal or it doesn't have, or I'm sorry, satellite radio or it doesn't. So that's problem number one. I also used to have Bluetooth connecting this and it worked really well, but now it's non-existent. So um, there's obviously the Bluetooth module and then there is also that satellite module. Now both of those are in the back corners behind the panels in the trunk. So we're gonna go ahead and go back there, pull those open and see if we can diagnose why this thing's running exactly what's going on with those. All right, so you have to excuse the mess. I have a bunch of tools in here right now from another project that we were working on. Uh, but I've had these panels out before and it's pretty straightforward. You guys will probably need a panel clip remover, uh, which is kind of like a screwdriver with a two prong uh, end like that. Uh, that'll save your, your basically your, your clips. If not, you may break them and have to replace those. Uh, for me, I've had this out before, so it's fairly loose right now. I never really put it all the way back together because I've had this ongoing problem. But all you're gonna do is basically pull off this seal here. You're gonna get your fingers back there. You're probably gonna have to use your piece you can kind of see how it's separated there. We just have to go ahead and get this whole thing out, as you see, like so, uh, to get to the module. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull this off so we have a better visual, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so to give you a better view with that panel off, here is what we're working with. Now, there's a few different modules in here. To start with, we have a QS entry module, which is right here. We have your Sirius satellite radio module, which is back here, which is actually covered up by your Bluetooth module, which is this one here. And then we have an actual satellite radio module here, which is, I guess, probably the main unit that controls the satellite side of it. Now, I will show you something funny. I do notice that I can see the red light coming through in this module here. But ever since I took off this panel, just to show you, I'm gonna touch the wires a little bit. It's not acting up anymore. So that tells me there's something going on back there that is some sort of disconnect. But we have to look into it and figure out if that's something to do with the most uh, optical wires or something with a power wire or if the module just need to be whacked around a couple of times. Now I will tell you there is a little bit of uh, nastiness back there. So if we go back here now, 
there's some sort of residue back here. It almost looks like salt. I don't know what that is or how that would have gotten back there, um, but I can see that it also is on the module itself. So whether that be moisture at some point or what, I mean, it wasn't a flood car. This was a clean title vehicle, um, but I don't know what's causing it. But again, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm basically gonna disconnect some of our plugs. So the first thing I wanna do is the wires that you see that are corrugated, like you see right here, almost looks like it has a wire loom around it. That's our optical plug. That's where you'll see the one and two coming in. So there's all of them have a quick disconnect. It's gonna be hard to do this from this angle because I can't see it. Because I know this plug pops out and I don't want to break it. But I'm going to go ahead and pop that out. I want to see if uh, light is actually coming through that. It'll test whether that unit is getting signal or not. All right, now coming from the other angle, it's really simple. The clip is at the bottom right here, if you can see that. Just pull it up and we're going to pull it out. See, we got a red light. So we got power going into it. Here's its signal. It's flashing, telling us that, hey, listen, I lost connection. So what has to happen is this is sending this unit here a signal. It's got to go from that signal back through here to the next module. We have to figure out exactly where that goes. Once we find the area, if it is an optical problem where it's no longer sending or receiving, then we'll know exactly what a problem is. So I'm gonna go ahead and diagnose this and run through the system and figure out where that break is. Now, real quick, something I found kind of interesting is after disconnecting the optical cable from that unit, you'll notice that now it just says satellite and it's lit up. Or not lit up, it's grayed out. So essentially the way they do it is when something's not available, it grays the system out so you can't touch anything. So auxiliary, maybe, but nothing else. So as you'll see, we have to keep going through that, but we know that that problem was probably not with that unit because it's actually allowing it to see signal and know that something's there. All right, so now all these three modules, as far as the most system or the optical light, is all coming within these modules and out. So these three seem to be okay so far. I believe from here, it goes from here to the main amplifier underneath the driver's side seat, which I know works perfectly fine because, well, the radio works. And then it goes up into the head unit. So we'll continue to go through that to make sure that we don't have any breaks in light and that the light is going through. And we will double check that power is working on all these units here and that there's no shorts and see if we can move forward from there. All right, so the next part that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test for 12 volts. So actually, now that the vehicle's running, a little over 14 volts of power going to each module. So we have our multimeter out uh, and we have it set. And I'm gonna go ahead and test positive at the green wire here and obviously black at the negative, which is pretty typical. Uh, and if I pull ground, I'm, I'm sorry, ground and power off both of those, then I know that we don't have any problem with this wiring. We'll go module to module. And that'll basically round down to saying that these modules are okay unless there's something internally wrong. Now I'm pretty sure it's definitely something back here considering that again the radio switched when I was messing with the modules back here but nonetheless we have to kind of do our due diligence and make sure that it isn't a power issue. All right guys so I went and tested all power to all modules which was all good in addition to the optical cables all sending signal so I'm not sure at that point exactly what is wrong with uh, power wise and signal wise I think it's okay it could be a module so I decided to try a trick now keep in mind this thing has the option for satellite radio all these vehicles that came this year in 2010 it did have that option it was standard uh, you didn't have to you had to pay for the subscription but you had it the, the modules built into the to the system as you see in the back of this one so what I did was I went to Sirius's website and signed up for a free subscription for two months Months, and it basically asked me to put my information in and then asked me to click on a to send, resend a signal to my car and after typing my VIN number and all that it sent the signal to my car and now you'll see that it says radio satellite so now I have the option for it now it's time to kind of explore and see what I can do with the radio or satellite system so what I do is I go to um, cat I don't see anything for stations so I'll go back up I will go to satellite one, satellite two, satellite three. There's nothing yet. So I want to go to settings up here. It tells me my ESN, all that crap. Um, direct channel input. Now it says it wants you to number two for it to actually notice what you're doing and start working. So I'll hit number two. I will hit okay. I don't know why it's doing that, but whatever. Um, and so far I'm not getting any stations. So I'm wondering either it needs a little bit more time to kind of figure things out, which it shouldn't. All right guys, so, so far it's working. I can't really complain there. I was able to figure out a little something out. Now typically with any satellite radio, you would be able to click on satellite and give you genres or you know, a list of the channels and stuff like that. Uh, I could because it's 2010, maybe it doesn't. I think it should though, because I've had it f many years prior to that and it did. Uh, but what I did was I went ahead and used these two buttons right here to surf through all the channels. I went back to channel two is what it said to go to. Uh, you can see someone there, it's playing. 
on this station. I can't play that obviously for copyright reasons, but um, it is working and I can save the stations. I'm just not getting a list. And again, I don't know the system very well. I've never used it or well, I don't know it at all because I've never used the satellite on this system. Uh, but again, it's a free trial for two months, it doesn't matter. This is really just a test anyways to see if it gets rid of some of my problems. Um, obviously, if satellite works correctly, then we know that the satellite unit is not to blame. And that's like $300 worth of modules that I don't want to just replace. Not only that, the actual main satellite module, the bigger one that you saw that said FOMOCO on it, that thing has to be programmed. So you're talking probably 250 bucks just for a programming fee at Land Rover as well. So that's another be on top of that and I don't necessarily care about satellite radio itself I just don't want the radio to keep screwing up so I'm gonna keep messing with this I'm gonna see if I can figure it out and I'll be right back all right so we're still moving forward I'm still figuring things out it almost seems like little by little it's starting to pick up more features I don't know if that's standard or not uh, but it's starting to work more and more so now I when I hit cat here you'll see I actually have options so um, you'll see if I hit let's just say I don't know pop whatever and it'll acquire a signal and then it will tell me exactly who's singing. There's one there. If I go back to Cat, I can go to Hip Hop. It'll acquire a signal for me, and then it'll say who is playing again on that. Now, again, it's not giving me all the different channels per each genre. I'm not really sure why that is. I'm gonna to continue to mess with it. But again, none of this really matters. I'm just going through little steps to see if this is gonna tell us if we have a problem with our satellite module. So after I'm done, fill in with all this and figure all of it out. I'll quit coming back and we'll just figure out what the problem is and see if we fixed it. All right guys, so next step is to test our Bluetooth. Again, my Bluetooth wasn't working, but we're gonna see if it works now. So what you wanna do is you just wanna turn your car on. We don't wanna turn any audio or anything on, just leave it off, leave the system on so you can see your main screen right here. Go ahead and go into your phone. If you're an Android user, you're gonna click on settings and Bluetooth. Uh, connections, I'm sorry, settings, connections, then Bluetooth. Under Bluetooth, you should be looking for something that says, obviously, the Land Rover. Now, once you click Land Rover, it's going to ask you for a code. Your code is going to be 2121, and then click pair. If it's paired successfully, you'll see it connect. If it's not, it will tell you it couldn't connect, okay? And then just try the 2121 again. Once it does connect, you're going to see that it, you're, typically your phone is going to ask you if it basically can access phone calls and contacts and stuff like that. Just say yes. Once that's all done and you're all set, I think I should be set right now because it said it connected. Go ahead and click on phone. All right, so I know I'm connected because my service is from T-Mobile. So it'll tell you T-Mobile. It's got your phone book here, uh, call register, which is just basically how many, I, I believe it's your last, like, uh, you know, who called you, who you called and whatever else. So we know that that's functioning now. So something happened ever since I connected that satellite radio. I don't know if it's something I did by touching wiring or, or actually connecting the satellite radio, but now everything is working for whatever strange reason. So that's great. I'm happy about that. So far, so good. Here's what we're going to do. Now, this is kind of a luck of the draw kind of thing. I'm going to put everything back together, but we're going to go for about a week, and then you won't see any difference, but I'm going to get back here in about a week, and we'll see exactly um, if this actually fixed the problem or not. If it did, maybe connecting Sirius Satellite Radio as a temporary fix might be a good solution for you. If not, well, we'll have to look into other things. All right, guys, so I went ahead and waited about five minutes and it gave it a little bit of time. I wanted to see if the phone was still connected as I haven't even left the car yet. And here you'll see now where it said T-Mobile before and it now says no network. So what I did was I went back into my phone. I double checked with the Bluetooth as you'll see in the screenshot right here. And you'll see that it says not connected. So I went ahead and clicked on it and it still won't connect. If I go back into call registers, you'll see everything is grayed out, meaning that there is not an option to be used because it again is not connected. So I think that this is clearly pointing to the fact that we have a issue with our Bluetooth module. All right guys, so one thing I wanna try before we install a new module is I wanna try disconnecting the Bluetooth module and reconnecting it. See, I did another search that you'll see in the screenshot right here, and now it's not even finding the Land Rover Bluetooth module. So I think maybe if I disconnect it and reconnect it, I want to see if that's going to allow me to find it again. So worst case scenario, if it doesn't, then I know it's a faulty module. If it does, then, well, it's probably still a faulty module, but at least has the option to get power work and then stop. All right, so I went ahead and disconnected all three plugs on the module to no success. And I also went ahead and powered down the car and powered it back up to, again, no success. So at this point, it's still not showing a connection available on my phone, so it tells me more than likely that this is a module problem. Now, before I get into replacing the module, I know that this isn't the most technical way to, to diagnose something, but a lot of times when you don't have the tools 
specific for something like this, like many of you probably don't at home. You don't want to just go out and replace modules, but you want to try to narrow it down to the most common obvious thing because 80 bucks might get you a module and it may not fix it. And you don't want to just keep throwing 80 bucks at the problem. Now, yes, you might be able to return that module or you might be able to resell the module, but still that's hassle you don't want to have to go through. In this case, we know that the Bluetooth module though is malfunctioning because it is getting power. I double checked that the power going to it was not disconnecting and it was not. The optical drive was not disconnecting because we would know it was because the other parts of the vehicle would stop working like the radio. Everything else is still currently working. So that tells me definitely the Bluetooth module has a fault of some sort. All right guys, so sometimes you can repair modules and we're gonna kind of attempt this right now since we're waiting on our new parts to arrive. Um, sometimes these methods work for me, sometimes they don't. So kind of take it as what it is. It typically won't cost you anything if you already have the tools, so it's worth a try. Um, as you can see here, we have the Bluetooth module. So I'm gonna go ahead and separate that. To separate that, all you gotta do is push the little tabs on the bottom corners, which are those right there, and it will pop right out. Uh, and then you're gonna have your board here. Now what you wanna do is kind of pry this thing out of here. Um, maybe not the easiest one hand, but eh, it's not bad. And you want to look over the entire board to see if there are any uh, any burnt spots or melted points or popped capacitors. Typically, if this thing's working and it's intermittent, you're probably not going to see that, just like I don't really see anything on this board. But what I'll probably do is I'll take the soldering iron here, and I'll hit all the soldered spots that you see here, the larger ones. And then I'll take a heat gun to go over the rest of the board to kind of glaze over the board to see if that gets rid of any possible cold welds or cold solders. If it does, it could potentially fix it. And again, we have a couple days for the parts to get here before they arrive, so it's either going to work or it's not. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to put it back together. We'll get it in the car, and I'll give you guys an update whether that worked or not as we move forward. All right, so in moving forward, what we're going to be doing is something you have probably already noticed if you have done this so far. If you haven't done this at this point, then you're going to see. Um, these things like to separate. They're very cheaply, basically, um, plastic welded together. So what we're going to use is we're going to use our plastic welding kit. We're going to go ahead and get these things clamped together uh, nice and tight like they were, and we're going to melt all the plastic from the backside forward and get these things held together a little bit better than they were, I would like to think. Um, but nonetheless, I want them held together so when it gets back in, it's not kind of clapping like that when we're riding down the road. So let me go ahead and weld those back together. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here is our final piece for the passenger side. You can see how everything was melted down and flatly smoothed out. Um, actually holds pretty well. I have basically stress tested it and twisted it and nothing came loose. So I don't think we'll have any problems as far as getting back on. Now one thing you guys might run into is the clips that hold onto these two pieces right here might be stuck inside the vehicle. Usually you can pry those out. Sometimes they'll actually push back into the vehicle and you will lose them. You probably will not be able to retrieve them. If you cannot find replacement clips, one way to get around these things holding it without rattling is taking a little bit of the soft side of uh, Velcro and wrapping it around here and it will basically stop this thing from right on inside and hold it in there fairly well So I've had to do that in the past. It does work. Let's go ahead Let's get the driver's side done and then I'll show you what they look like and just before I throw them in, I'll show you guys a screenshot of the driver's side. You can see that it was actually separated one, two, and three pieces. So it was pretty bad. Like I said, whoever taking it apart had a couple uh, wood screws holding it together as nice as that was. So fortunately, you can't see that because they put it through the car, but they at least did that. But I do need all new clips, as you can see here. They're all missing and basically just not there, so are broken. So I have to replace those. Not a big deal. Let's take a look inside the truck. All right, guys, so we got all the panels glued. Uh, the driver's side was far worse than the passenger side. Uh, it was broken like three different pieces, completely separated. Uh, it's because somebody had taken it apart before. And as you can see, at one point there was water intrusion in here. And a lot of people believe, uh, basically lead you to believe that it's because of this window right here, the seal that leaks. That's actually not the case. The reason it actually leaks is from all the way up here, you have a rear windshield wiper sprayer that comes through here and the unit gets separated right there. And when you go to spray your wipers, it straight runs down the side down here and over top of your electronics as you can see so i actually have all replacement units those will be replaced doesn't need to be part of the video but i have the replacement units for it um also you'll see that if you look at my headliner it's kind of coming off and that's actually a new headliner and i actually didn't make a video on that and the reason why is because with the water intrusion they'll leave some kind of kind of brown orange nastiness stickiness um, once you scrape that off, you still can't get very good adhesion. It's pretty much ruined unless you kind of do a, a top layer of fiberglass. And at that point on the roof liner, it wouldn't be bendable to get back in the vehicle. So I never did a video because I never found it to be successful. That's the reason I never got that uh, never got put on. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and throw these things back in after I clean this thing up a little bit. And I'll show you what it looks like all put together. All right, guys. So here is all the panels back together. I have no idea why I'm showing it to you. It's kind of ignorant because obviously you know what the inside of your car looks like. Let's move forward. 
All right, guys, so an alternate method to testing each individual module would be bypassing them with a set of bypass modules like you see right here. Now, these are fairly inexpensive, so if you don't mind spending 10 to $15 on a set, they are definitely worth the buy, and also they're actually worth using if you decide that you don't care about, let's say, a Bluetooth module and you're just going to bypass it and just want the system to work. You don't care about the functionality of the Bluetooth. Now, these are really simple to use. All you're basically doing is, let's say, for the Bluetooth module, for example, unplug the most ring cable that's going inside there out of it and you're going to basically connect that to this one here and then you're going to take this and you're going to plug it into the bluetooth module then you will unplug the power from the bluetooth module and it will disconnect it from the system while still allowing the optical um, basically feedback to go all the way through the system and all you have to do is you can do one unit at a time so if you guys don't want to kind of look to see if the light's coming in then check the next module to see if it's coming out of that unit this is probably an easier method, and again, it's fairly inexpensive. Now, yes, there is a diagnostic port to test these things if you have a factory scan tool. Odds are you probably don't, much like myself and much like most of the people that are on this channel, thus the reason we do this kind of content. So I hope that kind of helps you there. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, call it whatever you want, I've been actually pretty lucky because after fixing that Bluetooth module, I've had not one problem in the last five days. So I'm happy to report, I feel like the Bluetooth module has been officially fixed. And again, all I did was take a solder gun and solder the larger points I could get to inside the board, and then take a heat gun over the rest of the board to make sure that there were no what they call cold solders or cold welds. So I feel like it did work. Like I said, I haven't had any problems kicking off. You'll see it still says T-Mobile. When I get out of the car, it disconnects. When I get in the car, it reconnects. The uh, stereo has not cut out, it has not delayed on power on, I've not had any battery drain, so I'm happy to say and reluctant to almost say that the Bluetooth module is actually the main problem. I thought at first it might have had something to do with the satellite, but that has been flawless ever since I hooked it up to the Sirius system, uh, so I know it wasn't that. It had to have been the Bluetooth and now we're fixed. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. I hope it helps at least one of you. Like I always say on these videos, even if one of you get helped, the video is worth making. So if you guys like this content, you found it useful, definitely throw that thumbs up. We do have some more content coming out on Range Rover, well, because that's just its nature. Um, but we have some cool builds coming up too. So if you guys like that kind of thing, definitely stick around, hit that thumbs up, and definitely click that subscribe button if you haven't already to see more great content coming up. I'll see you on the next one.